Welcome everyone. We are recording today. But share my screen. Okay, I think, I think everyone is joined. Um, Henry, if you can keep an eye on the participants, if anyone comes in, let them in, please I appreciate it, thank you. So welcome everyone. Um, this is our kickoff for our family planning uh, service and rate model reform project. Uh, really glad to have everyone here um, and really excited about moving this project forward. Uh, today, I wanna to turn it over to Michelle. Uh, Robert, our director, um, uh, this, this is the agenda for today and I wanna to turn it over to Michelle for um, introductions and welcome. Sure, thanks Heather. Um, if you wouldn't mind, sorry, but taking the uh, PowerPoint back down again, just because it's a little bit easier to see everybody's face when we do introduction and I, introductions and I think that we're a small enough group that it might be nice just to give everybody the chance to say hello. Um, so good afternoon. My name is Michelle Probert. I am the director for main care and I use she, her pronouns. And we can start with the main care team first. So um, Heather, did you just introduce yourself? A little bit. Heather Pelletier. I am the project lead and work uh, in the delivery system reform unit with Olivia. Alfred. Hello, Olivia Alford, Director of Delivery System Reform within Main Care. And Michelle, just before we get to everyone here, I think we did want to have some questions for the our provider or other stakeholders to answer while they introduce themselves, just to not mess up Heather's magical plans. Um, but we can finish with the Main Care folks. Um, I'll hand it to Kristen. Hello, I am Kristen Merrill. I am the State Plan and Policy Development Manager for the Office of Main Care Services, and I'll turn it over to Henry. Hi, everyone. My name is Henry Eckerson. I'm a policy writer in OMS. David? Good afternoon, everybody. I am David Jorgensen, the Director of Data Analytics and Rate Setting for Main Care, and I'll pass it over to Peter. Peter Crow, Main Care Rate Reform Manager. Brian. Hi, everyone. My name is Brian Lumbra. I am on the rate reform team as well, and I operate as an analyst slash project manager. And who's next? Did we get everybody? Andy. Go back to um, Michelle for any other opening remarks. Sure. I was messing with Heather's wonderful agenda already because I actually would be, I don't know everybody, especially those whose faces I can't see. And so it'd be helpful to know who's here before I say a broader hello. Um, can we do all introductions and then at, and then I'll say a couple more things? Of course. Um, I'm putting in chat the questions for uh, stakeholders to um, kind of address in their um, introduction, if, if that would work for everyone. At least I'm trying to put it in chat. There it goes. Um, but Patty, would you first introduce yourself? Oh, sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, I think you're going to hear a little bit more from me later, but my name is Patty Boothang. I'm a senior managing director at Manat Health, and I'm based in Manat's Boston office, and we are a consultants um, that the state has engaged through procurement um, to support them and to support all of you in this work. And I just wanted to introduce Mandy Lee, um, who was off camera during the introductions. Mandy, do you want to just say who you are? Hi, uh, Amanda Lee, Rate Setting Coordinator. Thank you. Thank you. And then Michelle, yeah, I think we can move forward. Um, if uh, you want to jump in, any of our stakeholders that are here today? Nicole, do you want to start? I'm like, I'll start because I'm not <laughs> off, off camera. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hi, everybody. I'm Nicole Clegg. I'm the um, Chief Strategy and Impact Officer for Planned Parenthood of Northern New England. 
and we operate um, four health centers in the state of Maine and see between 12 and 14,000 patients a year. And I think the question is, what are we hoping that this, you know, the outcome of this is? And certainly we are hopeful for equitable rates that support the care we provide and recognize that we are a safety net provider in the state. Thank you. Desiree? Hello, um, I'm Desiree. I'm a biller for Mayo Northern Light Health. And I like to just yeah, get as much information about um, what going, what's going on in main care because that's my payer. So I'm just kind of listening in. If I have any comments, I'll let you know. Well, welcome, thank you. Rhonda? Hi, I'm Rhonda Woodman. I'm the medical billing manager for Maine Family Planning. And we operate 18 sites and are the grantor for the state of Maine um, for the Maine care rate um, contract. And ditto to what Nicole said. That's what I'm hoping to achieve. Thank you. Chelsea? Chelsea, if you're speaking, we're unable to hear you. Nope, that muted you again. <laughs> it's like Zoom is playing its tricks. Chelsea, while you work on that, we'll, um, I'll ask the representative from Mabel Wadsworth to go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Hi, um, I'm Kate Waning. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the Director of Finance and Operations at Mabel Wadsworth Center. Um, we're located in Bangor. We just have the one site. Um, and we serve about 2,500 um, clients per year. I am gonna go back off video here because I am having a camera issue. Um, and um, just kind of ditto of what Nicole and Rhonda said in terms of um, why this work's important to us. Thank you. Chelsea, was that, did that get figured out? And if not, that's okay. If you do get it figured out further on, um, there'll be an opportunity then as well. And she did, uh, Chelsea did introduce herself in the chat. She's the manager at PPFA. Oh, perfect. Thank you. And, and feel free to put, oh, good. PPFA stands for Planned That's Parenthood. Federation of America. But, okay, thank you for the FA part. I, I was assuming it was broader than Maine, but I didn't quite have it yet. <laughs> and I was going to say Chelsea's with me. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Great. Perfect. <laughs> Um, thanks everyone for the introductions and thanks for humoring me to um, go before I did, but I wanted to, to know who was actually in the room. Um, and I'll just start off by thanking all of you for your critical work, um, uh, the services you provide, family planning, behavioral health, addressing social health related needs. Uh, primary care needs are all critical. They've always been critical. I know that things got a lot more difficult um, and um, and there was uh, probably even more critical need for your services during the pandemic. Um, and then obviously in a post Dobbs world, that is all the more so. So I am sure that uh, your lives have been incredibly hectic and stressful. And uh, we um, really appreciate that you're there doing what you do. Um, I uh, think that this group has, uh, uh, or, main care leadership as well as leadership for the state as a whole has been aligned with the importance of the work that you do. We've had some challenging conversations um, over the past years. Uh, uh, I think that a lot of those were technical conversations and I think that we've come to resolution on those. Um, I just mentioned that in part because I'm really happy to be able to circle back to one of the earlier conversations that we had, which was really thinking about um, what care do family planning agencies uh, provide, uh, whether main care is currently formally reimbursing for that care now or not, um, and how can we support service models like yours that are person-centered um, uh, with that important role and have integrated care and have a payment model that supports that kind of model. And that's really what we're here to kick off today is that broader conversation. And um, it's a little bit more open than some of the conversations we start with for other services, but I think that that's uh, a bit exciting. Um, so there'll be some conversation on the vision side of things as well. Um, 
And I'm just uh, grateful for your presence and to kick off this work. So thanks. Thank you, everyone. Um, let me share my screen again here. So uh, our important partner in this work, um, you met Patty, she represents um, a whole team of people who are working with us uh, to make this happen. And I'm gonna ask Patty to introduce her team if my slides will, there we go. Um, introduce her team and uh, share that with us. Yeah, thank you. Again, it's really good. Uh, to be here with all of you today. And we're really excited to be working uh, with the main care team and with all of you on this project. So as I said, my name is Patty Buzang. I'm a senior managing director uh, at Manel. Um, I've worked with Maine for many years. And I think the good news about our team um, is that we have worked with this team on the phone today um, in, in other contexts, um, on other work, including alternative payment uh, related work uh, for the ACOs. Um, and my partner in doing that work is Abby Herring, who's a director at Medicaid, um, and who does a great deal of Medicaid payment and policy work, um, as do I. I do almost all of my work uh, in Medicaid programs and specifically working with state Medicaid programs on payment and delivery system reform. Um, overall, and, and the federal authorities needed to implement um, those initiatives and those innovations, whether those are SPAs or 1115 waivers or other vehicles. Um, so Avi will be a really important driver and subject matter expert um, of the day-to-day -day work uh, here, and I'll talk in a minute about what exactly that day-to-day -day work is. Um, Jacqueline Smith is a uh, project manager. She'll be really driving a lot of the day-to-day -day logistics, uh, project management. Um, she's also a subject matter expert in uh, from a family planning provider reimbursement specifically. Um, and she's supported by Alana Peterson, who is a manager and will be supporting the project overall. We have a subcontractor working with us in this work, Maria Dominiak. Um, who is an independent actuary, uh, consulting actuary. Uh, we work with Maria uh, in a number of states. Uh, we worked with her in Vermont, uh, uh, now working with her here, and uh, she's a terrific thought partner um, and actuary will support the work. Um, so just in terms of what the work is, uh, the purpose and the goal of our contract uh, is to support the department in reevaluating its family planning payment and payment methodology um, consistent with its goals for care delivery through the family planning uh, delivery system in Maine. And I think uh, Michelle and you have already, you and this team have already talked about that, and you're already, uh, your provider sites are already. Uh, largely moving in this direction or already in this direction of um, providing team-based, comprehensive, and person-centered uh, care uh, to the people that you serve. And of course, um, there's an interest at the state and you share the interest in um, optimizing uh, federal funding to support um, access, care delivery, quality um, of those services um, throughout Maine. And, you know, we recognize from the work we're doing in other states that that imperative is ever more heightened, that access imperative um, in the post-ops environment that you're all working in. In terms of some of the specific activities uh, we're going to be taking on at the end of the day, um, we're hoping to complete or we plan to complete um, sort of an assessment of the current state, sort of what's happening now, what some of the strengths and challenges are of the current main care family planning um, coverage and payment model. Um, we certainly, um, because Manat works in a number of states nationally, um, we bring a good perspective on what are some other state models for uh, payment and care delivery? What's some of the federal context? Uh, what is the federal, what are your federal partners have to say about um, delivery and payment of these services? Um, again, sort of thinking about your objectives as providers, the state's objectives as the stewards of the, of the Medicare program and ultimately accountable for delivering 
um, high quality and accessible care um, to Maine care members. Um, uh, you know, what are the policy objectives we're all driving to? Um, and we're going to get at sort of some of answering some of those questions through a series of interviews, not not a huge number, but a, a series of both sort of internal departmental and external um, interviews with providers. So one heads up for all of you is that if you haven't already heard from someone on our team uh, to get together with us and, and have a conversation or two, you, you will be uh, hearing from us. Um, another aspect of our work will be to be conducting a utilization analysis of Medicaid reimbursable family planning, non-family planning, and family planning related services um, by all of you who are providing these services to just sort of inform our thinking about um, a, a potential APM or another payment reform um, that might be able to uh, include some of those services that uh, really go to the end of comprehensive whole person centered care model um, delivered by family planning uh, providers. So I said, we're gonna be doing the inventory of what other um, states are doing and I'll bring that to the table as well. Um, and then we'll be working with our actuary partner to develop a venture analysis and projection um, after we sort of hone in on a couple of potential uh, payment model options. We'll be sort of looking at how those play out from a financial um, analysis uh, perspective. And through all of that, um, we will be supporting the department as they engage with all of you for input and feedback and discussion of um, these emerging analysis, uh, analyses and options. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, we will be working to support the department in any uh, additional federal authorities that it might need um, as it uh, uh, moves toward a different payment mechanism um, for fam family planning services. So I'll pause and I'm, I'm sure that Olivia and Michelle and others can put a finer point on my past review of the work uh, we'll be doing. Um, and we're just really looking forward to talking with many of you and to working with you uh, over the next several months on this project. Thank you, Patty. Oh, go ahead, Olivia. Yeah, I was just saying, I think that's great. And I think some of the finer points will be part of maybe what Heather will cover and really gets to the point of why this initiative I'm happy to have housed within the delivery system reform unit um, within main care because it's not just a rate study. We're updating rates. We're really, Manette was selected because they're very good at looking at um, what goals are you trying to reach and what is the care model and then developing a payment model to support that. So we're, we're happy to have this work be with our team and we'll talk a little bit more about our process next. Thank you, Olivia. I wanna acknowledge that um, Tammy Kramer and Brenda Gleason joined us. Welcome, if you wouldn't mind in chat, putting um, where you're from, uh, which organization you're from and your role and something that, a goal that you'd like to see come out of this project, um, please please feel free to do so, thank you. Yeah, so this project isn't just about you know the rates, it's about what's the model of care. Uh, so we're looking at building um, you know, the goals for this, the, you know, that we're working towards are a team-based, comprehensive, person-centered approach for services delivered by family planning agencies. Um, and so we'll be looking at, you know, all the services that you deliver, um, how they fit into um, the model, and then aligning that with a reimbursement model that um, is aligned with uh, our rate reform goals, uh, the has administrative simplicity, um, is accessible, you know, accessible, you know, supports accessible and quality driven service model um, is sustainable for family planning providers, and that it also maximizes eligible um, federal um, match, you know, opportunities. And so it's not, it's, it's really the whole benefit looking at it from beginning to end and how it can be aligned with these goals and how to build a model that's going to support um, uh, sustainability as well and access. So these, um, a, a, a monumental lift like this, this comprehensive um, 
reform project has several stages and we wanted to go through this. And at, an, at the end, we'll have an opportunity, we'll pause for questions because you, I'm sure you'll have many. Um, so right now we're in the beginning stages, we're here in early 2023. Um, there'll be stakeholder engagement, lots of research and analysis of data. And this will help us to determine um, a service model and then that service model will be analyzed for building a payment model and rates, and there'll be additional stakeholder engagement. And, that, and that's then in moving towards summer and fall, we'll begin the you know, formal processes of CMS approval, um, centers of Medicaid and um, Medicare and Medicaid services approval, and you know, rule promulgation, um, and there'll be again, another opportunity for public uh, hearing and comment period. And then there's also system changes, which uh, will be to some degree concurrent with these other stages. Um, the, we have a new uh, statute, um, a new public law, uh, chapter 639 that was passed in 2021 that impacts our rate uh, reform and um, rate development. And I'm, I'm gonna ask Brian uh, Lumbra on the rate setting team to uh, review that process uh, with you. Hi again, everyone. Um, yeah, so uh, LD 1867, which turned into chapter uh, 639 once it was codified, um, it, it's, it really, what it essentially does is it just, it formalizes the process that we're in now. Um, it sets a schedule, as it says, for a regular rate review and adjustment. Uh, we have annual updates um, to rates that are benchmarked off of Medicare. Uh, for those rates that are not benchmarked, um, we do have a COLA. Um, and we do have, I believe it's published already, the, the schedule of rate determination for the coming year um, on, our, on our website. Uh, it, it does, we do some comparisons between uh, state and national uh, data, uh, as it says, to inform rate amounts. With this push towards um, high value services and to, to, to connect reimbursement to performance. Um, I think most importantly for me, and, uh, and it affects you, it is this formalized, clear and transparent process for rate determination. And where this differs slightly, if you wanna pop back to the last slide real quick, Heather, So you see uh, under the rate development section, it has the stakeholder engagement process. And then under the approvals, it, so it has another public presentation and comment period. So this is slightly different kind of uh, going back to what Michelle said during her uh, opening is this is uh, uh, truly an engagement with you as the providers. And this section under rate development where we have this stakeholder engagement process is not the same. We just wanna be clear about that. It's not the same as the rulemaking process that's it's a little more rigid in the communication that, that we can all have during that process. This is truly um, uh, a, a, a collaborative engagement with you as the provider. So we just wanna make sure that that's clear that you know, as you speak out, um, you know, we can discuss these things pretty openly and um, we certainly uh, encourage your feedback. And if you wanna pop ahead um, to the next slide, you can. Uh, this, this also uh, through legislation, uh, we've established the main care advisory committee and a uh, subcommittee, I, I suppose, and then also um, establishes a technical advisory panel. So I think the big takeaway from this is, is that really we're just, we're codifying this, the entirety of this process and making it uh, uh, transparent for you all so that you know what's coming and, and you have uh, 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 a good a good opportunity to engage in the rate determination process. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Brian, I appreciate that. So the stakeholder process will continue, um, as you can see, and also uh, you've got my contact here um, and uh, Jacqueline uh, Mark Smith's contact. If you have uh, questions or um, feedback or resources you'd like to send us, and also please subscribe to the main care e-messages um, uh, for other updates as well in public meetings. And I think now's a good time to pause and, um, and, and ask if there's any questions or feedback um, from, from really anyone.
feel free to raise your hand or speak up and be happy to answer your questions. And if not, you're going to get a lot of time back in your day. <laughs> but we're happy to address any questions. Um, I, or, or any Go ahead, Nicole. I jump in over someone. No, you're good. Okay. Um, can we get the slides? Sure. Um, thank you, and really appreciate um, Michelle your opening remarks. Um, I think we are um really also very excited about this process um you know i'll speak for planned parenthood but i think that the experience we've just been having and the many things we've had to navigate over um the last 10 or 50 years um have been really extraordinary and um you know finding a model that's going to work for us that's predictable and equitable and helps us manage a lot of the uncompensated care that we're providing is is i mean we're really looking forward to the work. So thank you. Thank you. And I would just put a plug in for what Patty mentioned that um, for Nicole and for a few others who were, I, I don't know if emails have gone out already to make sure that you are look out for those inter, uh, requests for an interview from Manat, um, where we've been able to talk to you over the years um, really developed a nice set of questions to set the foundation for this work and get your feedback early. Um, so I'm excited to to have that built into the process. Yeah. And for others, the, there will be, again, for others who are not getting um, that initial outreach for the folks on the from on the call today that are part of just broader public interest into uh, sexual and reproductive health. I'm assuming that's what SRH stands for. Um, okay, um, is, uh, you know, there will be other, a, a lot of stakeholder engagement that's public as well. Um, so you'll want to sign up for those e messages um, to make sure you're getting notices like this. And then um, as we dive into the work, we'll, we'll, we'll reach out to individuals as we need more information. Patty, did you have something you wanted to say? I was just going to say what Olivia just said, which is that I think there'll be a broader mechanism for stakeholder input and engagement. Any other questions, thoughts, concerns, feedback? Things that we didn't mention that are important to you in this process? This is Brenda Gleason. I have a general question, which is you had mentioned looking to other states. Is Maine feeling like they want to be a leader in this space, or are they looking to, um, you know, copy other models that are out there? So we go ahead, Olivia. No, you can go ahead if you want. Do you want to, do you want to take it, or do you want to go? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I think. I think Maine's always, we, we see Maine as being a unique state. So I think a lot of things about Maine are different than other states. Um, and I think that's always, usually a good thing. Um, but you really, with Medicaid, can learn a lot from what other states have done and what they've been able to get federal approval for, for some of these things that push the envelope a little bit. It's nice when another state has paved a pathway where um, with the federal government, which we, you know, to get those approvals for those um, what they're trying to do in their state, but everything has to be put into a local main context. So it's very seldom that you take something from another state and do the exact same thing. We, we always need to change it. Um, so being a leader, I mean, certainly a leader for what main care wants to achieve, the things that main care hasn't done before necessarily in this area. Um, but there's a lot of other states who are doing great work too. So um, that's generally how we approach it is both to learn from them and then, and then adapt it for Maine. I think a great part of uh, leadership, especially in the world of Medicaid and probably in many other circumstances is, is uh, in part being a leader by building off the lessons um, of those who have gone before you. So uh, we always like to uh, leverage work where possible. So we're not starting from scratch, but at the same time, don't feel limited by those constraints if it doesn't make sense for us. I know I'm very happy to get this process done 
during this administration that has been so family planning positive. Thank you. Anybody else have any concerns or feedback or? We really appreciate the services that you uh, deliver for um, for me, from Mainers at large, not just main care members and uh, value that. And we'll be working hard for you to really be creative and um, work towards these goals to uh, you know reform how these services are modeled and paid for and, and appreciate your, your input and um, your sharing your expertise with us. Um, pause again if there's any any feedback or any questions. And if you um, you know think of something right after you get off the call that happens to me all the time, feel free to email me, you know, send me your thoughts or um, and we can we'll forward those to the Minat team and um, we will uh, take those into consideration. If you have resources you'd like to share, feel free to share those as well. Uh, we really do want to see all of that feedback. So. so I'll pause one more time. And if not, I wish you all have a great weekend. It's, oh, we're almost there. Well, thank you so much. We're excited and looking forward to working with you over the next few months to uh, get this done. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. You. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.